What's up guys, Doomwick here, and we are talking about some more unbans because I know that's everybody's favorite discussion over the past couple of weeks. We just released a video the other day where I just discussed what I think is going to happen on the potential ban and restricted list announcement that is scheduled to be announced this upcoming Monday. And a lot of people had asked me about unbans. Now, I didn't specifically go over that in the video, but I did want to go ahead and kind of re-look at the modern ban list to see if maybe there's anything we can remove here. We have five categories today. It's uh, unbanned today, no issues. Cards that I think could come off today would likely have no impact in the metagame. Unban with caution. Maybe it's a trial period type of thing. Unban it, see what happens. Watch list. Not necessarily things that I think could or should be unbanned, but something that, you know, maybe a further printing down the road, or if maybe something else were to get banned, these potentially could come off the list. Uh, category 4 probably should rethink that. You can kind of safely assume what that is. And then Category 5, LOL. Why are we even having this discussion? So we're going to kick today's discussion off with Ancient Den, and I'm actually going to lump all five of the artifact lands together because for all intents and purposes, they're all the same thing. They're just one of each color. Um, I would probably put the artifact lens in probably should rethink that. I'm actually going to go ahead and get all five while I discuss my thoughts. But the thing about the artifact lens, specifically with the printing of Urza Saga... I know a lot of people like to discuss artifact lands and say, oh, well, there's all these different printings like Beseju and Karn the Great Creator shuts them off and, and things like that. Which one am I missing, by the way? I can't find the last one. Um, but I really do think that these decks enable Urza... I think Urza Saga specifically is the most... Um, outrageous, like egregious printing to where if you were to unban these, they would just like take, they would, there would be so many affinity decks and Urza Saga decks like affinity would use the blue one, hammer would use the white one. You could even argue that the black and red one could be in some sort of potential like Thopter sword or, or anything like that. I just think that there's not a lot of positives to unbanning these and you should probably rethink that if you're thinking about the unbanning the artifact lands. Next card up here, Arkham's Astrolabe. This one was banned I don't remember when it was exactly banned, but it was right around right around when the Oko Ura Oko Urza Uro Abomination, that deck kind of took over the format, and it was played in some other decks too. The problem with Arkham's Astrolabe, you can see the card up on your screen, it really it it almost like creates this weird format in and of itself where it like you're not really playing magic because the deck, like the decks that have Arkham's Astrolabe just get to like have perfect mana bases. Normally backstops that are good against four and five color decks are stuff like Blood Moon and Magus of the Moon and things of that nature. Um, but these Astrolabe decks not only just get to effortlessly play a bunch of basic lands and always have access to every single color. It's a game piece. You can do stuff with artifacts. It was more egregious with Oko specifically, and, you know, we can have a whole conversation about that. But even Sans Oko, I still think this card offers too much. It's too free. Like, every single deck would, would likely play it just to fix their mana and get around Blood Moon. So uh, I'm actually willing to put this in the LOL category. I don't really think you would, why you would ever want to unban a card like this. All right, this one might be a bit of uh, hotly contested. So this is Birthing Pod. Now, this was banned in a completely different era of modern. I, co I totally understand we've had a lot of printing since then. Horizons 1, Horizons 2, Lord of the Rings. I get all that stuff. And a lot of people like to say that this card is maybe too expensive, gets hosed by certain things like Karn the Great Crater. There's, you know, already backstops against the Yawkmoth combo deck. But I, I really do think, I mean, I'm going to be completely honest with you. I think this probably makes the Yawkmoth deck too good. Giving the Yawkmoth deck the ability to, like, the, the common play pattern with Birthing Pod is you play a two drop and then turn three, you have access to four mana where you go three for the pod, one for the activation, and just immediately start activating it. And I think it allows these decks to consistent uh, access to the Yawkmoth. And there's, you know, plenty of other Birthing Pod decks. We, we, I remember one of my favorite decks of all time was the Twin Pod decks, where it would go like, use Deceiver Exarch in a chain to untap the pod and then use the pod to get the Resto. Resto blinks something, would untap the pod. It was really cool. But I think if you unban pod, none of that really happens. They probably just put it in Yawgmoth and the deck becomes too consistent. So uh, maybe not in one of these tiers, but I think, I, I think I'd put pod on the watch list, but I still would probably recommend against unbanning it. All right, this is where you're probably going to lose me because Blazing Shoal, and, you know, for those of you who maybe haven't seen, I actually did a video on the modern ban list quite a while ago. This was before we had other uh, cards that were... Yeah, this was, oh, I think, a year and a half or two years ago, and I've had this opinion ever since then, ever since Colossus Amber came out. Blazing Shoal 
it, whether you want to believe it or not, is just the worst version of Colossus Hammer. I honestly think they could pick, they could unban Blazing Shoal today, and there would not be a single issue. Part of what made that deck so broken uh, during this was like really early modern, like 2011, 2012, 2013 era, uh, like first PT. What made that deck broken was Gitaxian Probe, Mental Misstep, Ponder, Preordain. It had four of each of those cards. The consistency, the ability to take see your opponent's hand with Gitaxian Probe, and without those cards, I don't even think anybody would bat an eye, and I don't think anybody would even play Blazing Shoal. Um, now, a lot of a lot of people keep asking me, and this is kind of a small segue here. A lot of people ask me about, you know, what what could you do if this card got unbanned? And I say most of the time with these cards, and we'll we'll talk about this throughout the list, but. Yes, this card could get unbanned, does, but does it add anything meaningful or positive to the format? And with a card like Blazing Shoal, the answer is probably no, but I don't think anybody would play it. And here's another one of those cards, Bridge from Below. This, for those of you who don't know, the timeline of the uh, the Hogak disaster that was that, you know, summer into Hogak winter, that kind of like six-month period, um... Hogak was a, a massive disaster. Now, spoiler alert, maybe Hogak is going to be in a, a certain LOL section, but what happened was they had banned this card, Bridge from Below, in an attempt to weaken the Hogak deck, because Hogak was brand new at the time. I think they didn't want to ban it if they could avoid it, and I'm going to be honest with you, the Hogak deck arguably got better when they banned Bridge from Below. So I, I really... I, I This is one of those things where... This is, I think, and I'm going to put it, same as Blazing Shoal, it's basically the exact same situation where I don't think this card would have a meaningful impact in the format to where if you unban it, likely nobody would play it except like maybe some fringe decks. But at the same time, it doesn't really add anything meaningful to the format. So I'm going to put it in the same, the same tier as Blazing Shoal. Okay, look, I've seen people talk about and make arguments for whether this card should potentially be unbanned, and I've heard arguments for it. Uh, I have one thing to say to you. What are you talking about? This is just completely out of bounds. LOL, move on. Next up is Cloud Post. This is, a lot of people like to compare this to the Urzatron lands. Now, I, I have one thing to say. Cloud Post is a lot better than Urzatron. There's a combination, I believe it's uh, 12 Post, right? Cloud Post, I guess it's 16 at this point, because you can play Cloud Post, Glimmer Post, and then Thespian Stage and Vesuva. So you could even play up to 16 uh, Post, quote unquote, po like 16 Post. Uh, at the end of the day, I think Cloud Post is better than Tron to the point where I think it would, like, surpass Tron. If, Cloud, let's say, Cloud Post were to get unbanned today, I do think that more people, like, people who play Tron would switch to Cloud Post, most likely, because I think it's just a better version of Tron. And, I mean, I think I would put it in the probably should rethink that. It's not quite LOL territory. The card is powerful, but, I mean, Tron just dominated what... Tron was one of the decks that dominated the last Pro Tour, and it is pretty similar, but it is quite a bit better. So we'll put it in the probably should rethink that. I don't think they should get they should remove this card, but I mean you could do worse. All right, I had a couple people in my Twitch chat today talk about Dark Depths. Now, here's the arguments that were made. Solitude is a card that was recently printed. Uh, Odawara Prismatic Ending Leyline Binding. Yes, I understand. There are plenty of cards that die to Doomblade, but that doesn't mean that we should let people make a 2020 on turn two just because it dies to Doomblade. Uh, this is, for me, 100% in the LOL category. I cannot possibly imagine a world where this ever gets unbanned. Every single no ban list modern tournament that gets held, this deck dominates, and I would be shocked if it were uh, if it were ever removed. This one's for all you Jund players out there. Deathroid Shaman, a card that is near and dear to my heart. I played quite a bit of Jund during that era of modern. Um, and I remember at the time where Bloodbraid Elf got banned before Deathroid Shaman, if I remember if I'm remembering my timeline correctly, because they thought that would weaken Jund enough in. Uh, turns out it actually didn't. Uh, Deathrite Shaman needs to stay on the ban list as long as Fetchlands are legal, so I guess technically, I guess in that case you could put it in watch list, but let's be honest, Fetchlands are never going to get banned, so we'll put it in the probably should rethink that. Uh, this card just, it homogenizes decks in the same way that Astrolabe does, in the sense that it just becomes, every deck becomes a soup deck that has four Deathrite Shaman. With your midrange, your, your blue decks have it, your green decks have it, your, you know, your band decks have it. Every single deck would, would play, would splash for Deathrite Shaman. Next up, we have Dig Through Time. Now, this might not be a fair thing to do, but I am actually going to lump these two together. For those of you who don't know, this is Treasure Cruise. Uh, so I'm not going to put it up on screen. I'll leave up Dig, but it's seven and a blue, delve, draw three cards. 
Uh, this era of modern was one of the most broken. I, I remember the Treasure Cruise Delver decks. They were like dig through time scape shift decks. And the, uh, the only reason that the Delve cards are allowed to exist in Pioneer is due to the lack of fetch lands. These cards cannot and will never be removed from the ban list, similar to Deathrite Shaman, so long as the fetch lands are legal. So I guess if you want to um actually me, we can put it in the probably should rethink that category because, you know, I, LOL is like cards that would never be removed. This is cards that could be removed if something else were to happen. And you know, 0.001% chance, maybe they ban the fetch lands, but it's not going to happen. We're going to put the Delve spells in, probably should rethink that. All right, kind of a weird one next. This is Dread Return. Now, there's definitely some opinions and some takes on this card that I've seen floating around. It maybe is not the most broken without Golgari, Grave Troll, and Friends, and all the broken Delve spells, like you see Grave Troll and Faithless Looting on this list, which were mostly you know, banned because of Dredge. Uh, but the one thing that kind of scares me about Dread Return is the Oops All Spells deck. Now, the Oops All Spells deck right now plays the, the Balustrade Spies under City Informers to mill its entire deck, and the win condition is they have to, like, Salvage Titan and cast Salvage Titan and get back Vengevines and drain and this like this convoluted 17,000 step loop and all you have to do if you have Dread Return all you have to do is flip over three Narc Amoebas and sack them to Dread Return Thassus Oracle so I, I don't know per se if it makes that deck like if because you're taking up less spots for the win condition in that deck if that actually makes it any meaningfully better it probably does um i i actually kind of want to put dread return on the watch list and you know th that might be a, maybe a controversial take but outside of the outside of the oops all spells deck i don't really see dread return doing that much i don't think it really makes dredge that much better i guess maybe they could like mill a bunch and flip over narcabebas and start dread returning ashen riders or archon of cruelties but I mean, they, they still lose to the same graveyard hit spells, right? Ayavugan, absolutely not. I lived through this time. I played some of the most modern that I've ever played. I actually top eight. I think I top eighted like three or four PTQs during the the Eldrazi winter season because I played Eldrazi and the deck was not remotely okay. Um, yeah, this no, absolutely not. Another kind of controversial take here. Now, Faithless Looting. A lot of people who kind of advocate for the Faithless Looting Unbanned, they like to think of the Bells and Roses and, oh man, all this cool stuff that we could do with Arclight Phoenix. But the reality of the fact is, if you let people have Faithless Looting, they're just going to cast it on turn one and discard Archon of Cruelty. Do you really want that happening? I'm going to put this in LOL category, but let me know, uh, let me know how wrong I was in the comments. Okay, hear me out. This is one where I might lose you guys here. Field of the Dead, at least to my knowledge, was the most prevalent during the time of Uro and, and Oko and all this mid-range nonsense that was going on. Modern at the current at its current state has kind of sort of moved past that. We're in a much more aggressive version of modern where the games are being played, you know, on a smaller like a lot of people like to describe modern as the games are they're taking the same amount of game action, or they're taking the same amount of turns, but there's just more game actions in those turns. So, you know, like you have the grief scam openings, and you have like a lot of people casting free spells back and forth, trying to interact with each other. Now, in that high-paced format, I actually don't think Field of the Dead would be that great. Like, what deck in the format, outside of maybe Four Color, would even want to play Field of the Dead at this point? I guess Amulet Titan. Um, but, eh, I don't know. I, I think this is one... I'm, this, again, controversial take. Probably going to get a lot of stuff in the comments below. But I think this is one where you could kind of just... I would like to see how it plays out without all the Uro and Oko and mid-range BS that was going on back then. Um, this is this is one that I, that I could... I could see a vision of it. But, you know, again, with caution. All right, you know, I'm beginning to think that some of these on the list I should just automatically remove because they're just the most obvious things. I'm trying to find the, uh, where, why can't I find Mental Mist Up? Here you go. Cataxian Pro and Mental Mist Up. These cards were mistakes. They should not have been printed. They will remain on the ban list. Um, I don't know what to tell you if you disagree with me. Next up, we've got Glimpse of Nature. Now, this one's weird because specifically with the printing of Orcish Bowmasters, now, if you, if you, take a moment and take a look at legacy elves a lot of the legacy elves decks 
have been recently cutting Glimpse of Nature because of the presence of Orcish Bowmasters. Now, there may be other factors that go into that, but that's definitely a consideration for the Elves decks. And given the presence of Bowmasters in the format as kind of like this natural backstop to Glimpse of Nature, now maybe that's not, again, maybe that's not a good argument, but this is one of those ones where green creature decks in a general sense, due to the presence of Solitude and Fury and Orcish Bowmasters and Red and Six, they're... Uh, they're, they've been taken down a notch, I think is the light way to put it. So, uh, you know, I wouldn't mind. I, I could see this happening. I could. I, I think I'm going to throw it in the unbanned with caution. Again, maybe a controversial take, but I'd like to see what happens. Green green creature decks maybe need a buff. All right, here's another weird one. Golgari Grave Troll. Now, I know we've had a couple of these like on the watch list and, and stuff, or maybe like the probably should rethink that category somewhere in the middle of that, where this card could probably get unbanned if you ban something else, where I don't know if Grave Troll is necessarily the best example of that, because I'm thinking maybe if you ban like, I don't know, like how far do you go at that point? Do you ban Cathartic Reunion and Thrilling Discovery? It's just one of those things that like, why would you do it? Dredge is, I mean, almost unplayable in the format right now, the, with the printing of Sanctifier and Vec and Endurance. There's so many good anti-graveyard hate nowadays, Leyland of the Void, Dothy Voidwalker, and I, I think that you could unban Troll, and it maybe would give Dredge a small boost, but it wouldn't really, like, people still wouldn't be clamoring to play Dredge, but at the same time, it's like, why would you? Does it add anything meaningful to the format? So I guess in that vein, it kind of, maybe you could put it up here, with these other cards, because I think all of these cards are, yeah, you could probably unban them today and nothing would happen, but why would you want to do that? All right, and here we go with another maybe controversial one, Green Sun Zenith. Now, uh, if memory serves, this was mostly, I'm trying to remember, when was Green Sun Zenith banned? I want to say... I don't think it was too long. Maybe it was a long time after. Let me know in the comments when, when Green Sun is banned, because I honestly can't remember. Um, but at the end of the day, this card does make Amulet Titan a lot more consistent. Like, it, th this card is busted in Amulet Titan. It finds Dryad. Uh, it can find Grazer if you need to just, like, Ritual. If you have two Amulets, you can go spend two on a Grazer, uh, and that's just plus two mana because your Bounce Land makes four. So I, I, this card just does so much for Amulet. I think it's probably a little bit two up there uh, on power level, but I think I'd put it on the watch list for now. Although, again, you know, Amulet, uh, other sort of Titan decks, maybe it makes Yawgmoth too good. But we did talk about, again, green creature decks. Here's the Glimpse of Nature. So, like, this would make green creature decks good, but it also would make green combo decks good. And maybe that's the maybe that's the, the trade-off. I'm not going to spend much time on this one. LOL, move on. Up next, we have Hypergenesis. I actually, this one's kind of interesting. So uh, again, this is one of those ones that was banned pretty early on in the modern format. Don't think that there was, uh, I want to say it was like the, I can't remember exactly when it happened, but um, we've kind of moved past Hypergenesis. Like if you look at the Cascade spells people play nowadays, people are cascading into Living End and putting 20 power into play. They're cascading into Crashing Footfalls and putting 10 power into play and backing that up with good interaction. Or you have the Glimpse of Tomorrow decks, which are just casting a Violent Upburst and ending the game on the spot. So, I mean, what hy is Hypergenesis necessarily better or worse than any of those other suspend spells? No, but at the end of the day, it's like, you know, it's same category as the Shoal, uh, the, the Blazing Shoal, and the Bridge from Below. It's like, I think they could unban this tomorrow and nobody would really play it, but does it add anything meaningful to the format? Probably not. All right, up next we have Croc Clan Ironworks. This card was, I think, banned in like 2018, 2019. Correct me if I'm wrong there. Um, but it was mostly due to the Croc Clan Ironworks combo deck. And they essentially didn't ban this for power reasons. They essentially banned it because Matt Nass won 5,000 tournaments in a row with it. But at the end of the day, I do think that not only is the... There's a couple of reasons why KCI is banned. One is power level. The deck is exceptionally powerful. It's like a turn three and a half, turn four combo deck. Um... It's relatively resilient, but it is an artifact deck-based combo, and there's a lot of backstops against artifacts. But I think the two reasons why the the two reasons this deck is banned the most is one time, similar to a card we may get to later, Second Sunrise. It just makes tournaments take a lot longer because 
it's the combo is not like deterministic in the terms in terms of like I've demonstrated an infinite loop here is Splinter Twin here is you know Heliod Ballista or whatever it's there is like that 0.005% chance that you fizzle so you know it's same with second sunrise it just makes the tournaments take longer and it creates these weird ruling errors where you're like casting a spell and using the chromatic sphere to pay for it but you're using the kci to sack the spell so you draw a card before you cast this i don't i don't really i don't really want to wrap my brain around the the logistics of that but i think for those reasons alone i would probably put it in probably should rethink that maybe not quite lol territory um but in either case leave it on the ban list we get to a relatively recent banning in the form of Luris of the Dream Den. Um, no, I, in no, no, no. In more context, I really think that this just similar to like the Astrolabes and the Death Road Shamans, it kind of just homogenizes everything. When Luris was legal, you didn't really have any good reason to play three mana plus permanents. Now, granted, they have printed a lot of those good three mana plus permanent sense that the evoke elementals, fable the mirror breaker, etc., etc. Um, but I think it just kind of restricts deck building too much, where I don't really think it's worth it, and I would put it in uh, probably should rethink that again. Not quite LOL territory. I'm shedding a tear for this one. This was the first modern deck that I ever really enjoyed, uh, one that I bought myself and spent quite a bit of money on, and I uh, cried myself to sleep the night that I found the, the night that I found Box Hopal got banned. Uh, unfortunately, I think with recent print things like Urza Saga and things of that nature, I think we have to keep it in. I, mm. Just for, for my own sake, I'll put it in the probably should rethink that territory, even though I think it's more of an LOL. Um, but just for my own personal well-being, just regardless, leave it on the ban list. And here we get to Mycosynth Lattice. Now, this was uh, banned for, Car the, I guess you could say banned for Karn the Great Creator Sins. Uh, but let's be honest, I mean, this card isn't really doing anybody favors. But for those of you who don't know, it is essentially is a lockout piece where uh, with Karn the Great Creator, your opponent's artifact or your opponent's artifacts cannot be activated and Lattice turns all of their permanents, including lands, into artifacts. So you could go Karn, minus, get a Lattice from your sideboard, cast the Lattice, and your opponent could no longer play spells for the rest of the game. Uh, and that's not fun. So for that reason, uh, just putting it into the LOL territory. Maybe it's not quite powerful. Maybe like if you want to um actually maybe maybe we could put it in probably should rethink that. But in any case, it's not doing anybody favors. Mystic Sanctuary. This is again we're get we're finding a similar theme here. Uh Death Red Shaman, Arkham's Astrolay, Blurus. It just homogenizes things. It just turns decks into like four color soup piles and that just kind of face off against each other with cryptic command loops and, and all of that kind of nonsense. Uh probably should rethink that territory, I think is where I'm gonna go ahead and put this, but uh, let me know how wrong I am in the comments. Really? Why do we even have this on the list? LOL, next. And here we get to Once Upon a Time. Now, this card is broken. Don't get me wrong. This card is completely broken. Um, and I think it probably makes the more of the combo-focused green decks a little bit too consistent, like stuff... Uh, the one that comes to mind is Amulet Titan, I think is the one that this probably breaks a little bit too much in the same vein as Green Sun Zenith. And the fact that it's a free cantrip is just, like, I don't really know why they printed this card. So, yeah, I think, I think I'm willing to put it in LOL territory. Again, maybe it's one of those that maybe should be up in the second category. But, I mean, let's be honest, these two categories are pretty close to the same. It's more that I just wanted to have a second category because I didn't want to have three, uh, three rows of cards in the same category. Ponder is next up on our list, followed by its brethren preordain. I'm going to lump these two in the... Actually, hold on. Maybe I won't lump these two in the same category. So, hear me out for a second. This might be... This might sound a little weird. I think Ponder is the better of the two. I think we can probably agree on that. Ponder, on average, looks at more cards. It's shuffling, so in terms of tournament logistics, it's more shuffling. Not that that has that much bearing on it, um, but I, I do believe that Ponder is the better card because it just digs deeper. So I think what I want to do for Ponder is put it in the probably should rethink that, but hear me out. I actually think that Preordain could potentially be on the watch list or even unbanned with caution. The The difference in power level between Ponder and Preordain, I think, is maybe relatively high maybe i'm a little off on that um but you know i like if we look at a deck like murktide murktide was one of the most popular decks for quite some time and if you ask people if they should unban preordain during that time they probably would have, would have given you a funny look um but with the printing of lotr 
Merktide has really fallen off the radar, uh, fallen off the, the face of the earth, it feels like. And, you know, I wouldn't mind seeing this a little bit of little bit of consistency. Maybe it helps the wrong decks. Maybe it helped maybe four color would play it. They probably would. Um, but I think this this one might be a stretch, but unbanned with caution. Really? You're going to tell me that Punishing Fire is banned, but we can have Fury and Renin Six? Or what are we doing over here? Unbanned today, no issues. Again, it's one of those things, every single card in the top tier, you could unban today. They likely wouldn't have that many, much if any, impacts in the format, but is this really making the format a better place? But Punishing Fire, yes. Unbanned today, no problems. Light of Flame, which to my knowledge was uh, mostly banned because of the power, the power level, excuse me, of Storm. Is it Storm? Now, you might think that if you unban Rite of Flame, you might get to get people to play these sweet blue-red Gift Storm decks. But the reality of the fact is that if you unban Rite of Flame, people are just going to cast Chalice the Void on turn one. So miss me with that. We're going to put this in the probably should rethink that category. All right, and here's one that I referenced earlier. Second Sunrise was, to my knowledge, again, mostly banned due to tournament logistics. Like, this deck was just an absolute nightmare. If you would go to a Grand Prix, almost every single round went 20, 30 minutes over time just because of this deck alone. And that's, I, I believe that is the most, the, the biggest reason why it got banned. Now, again, I really think that if you unban this card, not a single person would play it, so I don't really think it would cause any issues, but... Again, similar thing, it just makes tournaments take way too long, even though I think the deck would likely be unplayable in this format, just why would you want to do it? Okay, bit of a controversial take here. Again, I know we've had quite a few of them today. Seething Song is a weird one, because I'm trying to remember why it was banned. I, again, it was a fixture of the Blue-Red Storm deck, and I think that might be part of the reason why it was banned. But unlike stuff, you know, like Simeon Spirit Guide and Chromox and Rite of Flame, you're not powering out early Chalice of the Voids or early Blood Moons with this. You're not casting this until turn three. So this is really only good in the Storm deck. I'm trying to think of other... I guess Belcher would play Seething Song, so maybe you don't want to give a boost to Belcher, but I, I don't know if it really changes that much in the Belcher deck. I actually think you, you might be able to unban Seething Song. Again, similar vein to Preordain, where it's like... Yeah, maybe you could. Don't know if you should. Maybe there is some caution there, but I, I actually don't think Seething Song is is ruining anybody's day because, again, you're not casting fast lock pieces with it. You're more so, like, if you cast Seething Song, you want to mean it or you have to mean it. So uh, unmanned with caution for Seething Song. Really? We're going to do this again? LOL. Next. This one's in a similar vein to Rite of Flame where... It is, it, it's a lot worse than Rite of Flame, and it's a lot worse than Chrome Mox. Don't get me wrong, it's worse than those two cards. But it's not really helping the right people, where people are just going to be casting turn one chalices and turn two cascade spells with Simeon Spirit Guide. So as far as any of the, the red fast mana, specifically Spirit Guide, because the cascade decks like Living End and, and Rhinos cannot play Rite of Flame or Chrome Mox but they can and would play Spirit Guide, so I don't think you want to make the Cascade decks better, so we'll put that on the probably should rethink that. This is a challenge to all of you listeners. I would love for somebody to give me a good argument why they think Skull Clamp should be unbanned, because I've seen people talk about it, and it is preposterous to me. I cannot even imagine a scenario or a world where this card ever gets unbanned. It doesn't make any sense to me. I'm going to put it in LOL, but I really hope that somebody can give me a valid and good argument for this card. Moment you've all been waiting for. I probably should have saved this one for last, but we'll we'll go ahead and get it, get it out of the way now. So um, Splinter Twin, I don't know who needs to hear this. It's not getting unbanned. It never will be. Now, that's not to be said that could it come off the ban list? You know, I, I'm going to be honest with you. I'm not even convinced that it would be that good in this format. There's a couple of different shells that you could put it into. You could put it into Merktine. You could put it into Rhinos, potentially. Uh, there's maybe some cool stuff you could do with it. I would... Eh, I don't know. Like, this this one's so tough for me because I, I really don't know. It's between watch list and unbanned with caution. Maybe I'll keep it on the watch list for now, but... I don't know, like, I just, I, I don't really know that it would be that good, but there was just so much complaints over, you know, the time where it was dominant, everybody was complaining about it, and now everybody, the, the same people want it back, so you gotta make up your mind on this one. Alright, I don't know how many of you played during the Summer Bloom era of Modern, but this deck was 
beyond broken. It was beyond obscene. This might be a hotly debated one, but this is going to be an LOL for me. I don't really imagine a world where you could ever unban this card. Here we go. Another one of those. Why would you? You could unban it, and I'm going to put it in the top category, but why would you? It does, it, does it make the format any meaningfully better? And that's the conversation that we're having throughout today and all of these cards that are in the top row. I don't think that any of them would have any impact whatsoever, but why would you? They don't add anything meaningful. And look, here's another one. This might be, a, again, controversial take. Top row, Umazawa's Jite. Now, maybe no issues is a little bit different with this one, because maybe there could be some issues. This one, okay, we'll, we'll put this one down here, actually. I, I actually, I kind of did a version of this before I started recording, and I was like, eh, I had Jite in the top row, but the more I think about it, it's like, maybe you have to be a little bit cautious with it. I don't think it's, like, ruining anybody's day, but it's just more of the same, like Punishing Fire and all these cards that punish these small creature decks. Like, we already have plenty of stuff in the format that does that. Why do we need more? So this one is not actually the last one, because I realized after looking at this list, and, and this was already pre-built, this tier list was pre-built for me, and I was too lazy to make another one, but Yorion is absent, so we'll discuss Yorion after this. So it's not actually the last one, even though it looks like it, but Uro Titan of Nature's Wrath. Um, I've lived through this format. Uh, you know, it's not quite on the same power level as Oko, even though they were both essentially banned for the same reason. So I put it in probably should rethink that, even though uh, it's never going to get unbanned. The actual last card on this list, which we're going to have to just pretend that there's an image of Yorion right, right around here. Just pretend that there's a square, uh, you know, Sky Noodle over there. Um, Yorion is the most recent addition to the ban list, and it's kind of a weird one for me. <sighs> I don't actually know. I haven't really spent a ton of time thinking about this. I think probably like watch list. A lot of the reason that Yorion got banned was the stuff you were flickering like Arkham's Astrolabe and, and things like that. Now, I will say that the Yorion play experience, the, the worst part about it, specifically in paper, now that we've, you know, uh, we've transitioned back to paper magic for the most part, it sucks to play in paper. You have to shuffle, like, the nature of Yorion playing 80-card decks with all these fetch lands, it just sucks in paper, and we could try to avoid that. So uh, maybe watch list, maybe should rethink that, but somewhere in, in that tier. And here we have it, the best and undisputed modern unbanned tier list. I will leave a link to the tier maker uh, page where you can go ahead and create your own tier list. But more importantly, let me know in the comment section below how poorly I did, how, how wrong I was, every single wrong decision, how crazy am I for saying that, you know, Golgari Grave Troll could unban today, no issues. You gotta let me know. I'm always farming those engagements. Till next time, we'll see ya.